CSC Show Control Tutorial 10 OSC. OSC stands for Open Sound Control. It is a messaging protocol a lot like MIDI, except it doesn't have some of the limitations that MIDI has. For example, data size. In MIDI, if you've looked at my tutorials, you know that information can only run from 0 to 127. And there are only so many types of MIDI information. Note on, note off, volume, controller changes, but they are limited. OSC has an unlimited set of messaging that you can do. It just depends upon the manufacturer. Now, I do have to make a disclaimer here. I'm showing you CSC Show Control, the professional version. OSC commands are not available natively on the LE version but they are available natively on the Pro version. And I'm showing you that now. The Pro version is a little more expensive and you can check that out on the uh, CSC website. Let's go ahead and show you what we mean as far as sending OSC data. I'll place a link to a video down below that has a more detailed explanation of what exactly OSC is. But with this, we'll just show you how to quickly send some OSC commands that can actually communicate with other software and hardware. Now, OSC has become very popular with manufacturers because they can set up their own set of commands for their hardware. So for example, ETC EOS, their lighting control desks have OSC commands for virtually everything on the console. So you'll be able to find some third party apps where you can actually carry around a tablet and access every single feature on their hardware console. I'm just showing you one or two pages from that. It's pretty amazing. And I'm sure that you're familiar with digital mixing. And you know again that there are apps out there uh, you can have on a tablet and control every single feature of a digital mixer. That's because the company has baked in OSC messaging that can talk to virtually every single part of that digital mixer. So OSC is becoming very, very popular. It's even being used for musical instruments now in place of MIDI. So since that's becoming more popular in the entertainment field, you're going to see that in more and more show control software that allows you to send OSC commands to hardware or software. A lot of recording software like Ableton and Reaper can also be controlled by OSC commands. We're going to show you how to send like an OSC command to a piece of lighting software. So when you start up here, you have to go to comms and we're going to go to comms setup. OSC commands are typically in a local network send over the UDP, which stands for user datagram protocol. I'm going to my UDP port here. So I'm going to need the address of the light board or mixer or computer that has software running on it that I'm sending these OSC messages to. So in this case here, I'm actually sending them right back to my own computer here. So my address is 10.0.0.30. And then I also have to include a port address here. Usually most port addresses work. I put in 8,000 here. That's a typical number to use or 7700 is a typical number to use. If you're having a little trouble, check your manual for your light board or mixer. They may recommend a specific port number that they would like you to use to communicate. And that's where you're going to put this in. So the address on the IP network of your device or laptop and also a port number is required. And we'll click OK. Now, what I've gone ahead and done to communicate with my lighting software here is set up a number of OSC commands. And OSC commands basically have two parts to them, an address and then a data part to it. And I'll just show you that. I'm going to bring up a profile here in this lighting software. I'll take a look at it. And you can see the syntax that I'm using here. So slash page one slash button one or slash page one slash button two. It's almost a lot like a URL where you're trying to type in the address to go to a specific web page. In addition to that, you have to include an integer data for this program, a one or a zero, one meaning to 
turn that particular button on or press that button. And then you can see some other descriptors here. Page one, start. Page one, stop. Page one, next. Page one, preview. So I set up these different addresses and then I attach them to buttons in my virtual console. So I'm going to bring up my command and you can see that my command format is slash page one slash button one space one. The page one button one is the address and the one is the data part and we have to have that. And then there's going to be something similar for the next button up here. This is going to be button two, button three, and then button four. Down here, we use a similar idea. To start playback, we're using page one start, and to stop playback, we're using page one stop. For next queue, we're using page one next, and then previous queue, we're using page one previous. With this particular piece of software, QLC Plus, I can use any name that I want to to identify a certain location or button and activate that button. With other hardware such as light boards or mixers, you're going to have to have the manual and you're going to have to have a list of the OSC commands that it can understand because you'll have to send those particular commands along with any data that has to be sent along to it. But QLC setup is very, very easy. It allows me to actually name my own commands and then associate them with buttons. So the button one is slash one page one button one and then my data which is an integer just the number one and I'll send that we'll go into run mode here if I send this command it will activate button one and turn on the lights for button one. Here's button two you can see button two be activated it's a blackout button three is up and that's blue and I can send button three again and actually turn this off by pressing it again. So first press on, next press off. So it works just like a button. Now, these commands down here are actually activating my queue list. So the start command is going to activate this particular button and that gets the queue list started. Now I can go to my next command down here, which would be this button, and proceed through the queue list. So again, we can send OSC commands to this lighting software to synchronize it with audio or other slides and just complete the synchronization. We're just using OSC commands instead of MIDI commands. If I need to go to a previous backup to a previous queue, I can do that. That's actually activating this button. I'll do previous again. If I need to stop, which would be this button here, I can just click stop and it will stop and shut down. So that's basically with this particular piece of software, the OSC commands. And it has other OSC commands that it'll accept, like moving faders and turning dials, etc. But this is just a short example of how we can use OSC commands to actually press buttons, and run through a queue list on this software. Again, whatever you're trying to control with OSC, you'll need to have an understanding of what that device or software can understand from an OSC standpoint. Usually they have a list of OSC commands for that device or for the software that will help you learn how to send the commands that you need to send to affect buttons or faders on that device or software.